when I went there, I didn't know that I'm going to such a place where uh, there is no light, no gas, no water. Salamu, salamu, salamu. Salamu alaykum ya jama. Salamu alaykum ya jama. Ah, salamu alaykum. We bore witness to love. Love that transcends color and borders from the blessed people of Ghana for Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih. They returned the love and care this humble servant gave to them for eight years until the entire nation reached out to him and embraced him as her own. When I was here, I did not think of abandoning this country. I considered myself to be a Ghanaian. Join us on this unforgettable journey in this two-part series as we tread the footsteps of humility and humanity exemplified by Hazur as a young devotee. A very unassuming, gentle and a humble human being. Witness the example of dedication. That man was good. He, if not because of him, like this school would not come to stay. Witness the example of love. That's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> he was teaching you English. Witness the example of brotherhood. Pre President today, Huzu, mm -hmm. could lay his head with us. It's an example of humility. It's an example of obedience. It's an example of commitment. It's an example of recognizing a human being for his worth. <laughs> This was the moment dreamt by the thousands and yet not witnessed until 1970 when Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih III graced Ghana with his presence. Little did anyone know what blessed doors this visit would open in the future. Love for all and hatred for none is what Hazur had preached and on his return from Ghana he put it into practice like never before by launching the Nusrat Jahan scheme. Under the scheme schools and hospitals were started around Ghana and then eventually all over Africa. When I decided to sacrifice my life for work for Zindagi, Tariqedi the office was, uh, I think, they didn't need me because they thought that uh, we don't want somebody who is uh, qualified in this particular subject. I wrote directly to Sri Masih Salis and he marked that letter to Tariqedi. So Tariqedi replied back to Sri Masih Salis that uh, we don't need this boy at present. As soon as Sri Masih Salis received this letter, he said, you don't need him, but I need him. Huh? Then he asked me to go to, through Nusra Jahan to Africa, Ghana. He embraced me, and that was the first ever experience I had by embracing any of the Khalifas. <laughs> so anyway, then I went to Ghana. The very important thing he asked me that, remember, that you are going to Ghana as Waqfi Zindagi teacher. Huh? And also remember that you belong to the family of Prophet Musayyal Islam. And uh, people there will always keep their eyes on you. So always remember Allah and don't do any act which is against the teachings of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. Sahib Zada Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad dedicated his life and through the scheme was posted to a very remote and unknown part of northern Ghana as headmaster for the secondary school Jamaat had started 
in the small town of Salaga. So straight from the comforts of Pakistan to the harshness of the barren north, where Hazur spent an entire year by himself, humbly carrying out his duties. The principal of the school took me along with him from Kumasi to that place, Salaga. It was the remotest town in northern region of Ghana. The house was very small, two rooms, just four, three, four feet. On one side there was a kitchen, then toilet, bath. I stayed uh, alone for almost uh, one year without my family. First I learnt making chapatis there from our missionaries who was living in Tamale. Early morning for the breakfast and normally I used to take bread and uh, egg and so on. No afternoon lunch, hmm? like an evening after closing from the school. Around four o'clock I'll prepare my food, sardine or yam or prepare some uh, chapatis. I lost almost uh, 25 pounds of my weight at that time. Hmm? Uh, later on it was okay. So I enjoyed that adventure also. That was an adventure. Now, 30 years later, we commence our journey from the same place where Hazur began his service as a devotee in Ghana. So I'm now here at the TI Ahmadiyya Secondary School here in Salaga. And first of all, it was this place, this secondary school, that Hazur was first posted to when he arrived from Pakistan uh, to Ghana. And um, I'm just going to go in there and ask a few people I can find there what they can tell me about Huzru's humble beginnings from here in Salaga. Treading the same footsteps, it's hard to realize what this place was like when Hazur first arrived here. The Talimul Islam Ahmadiyya Secondary School in Salaga is one of the most recognized schools in the area today with well over 1,000 students attending from all over the region. It is an incredibly huge establishment with all learning resources readily available for a range of students from different backgrounds and religions. But 30 years earlier, such a teaching facility was impossible to imagine in this region as secular education was an absolute no for any child. Today, it's a very different story as you can see. I can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> How many do we have here? One, two, three thousand plus, two thousand? <laughs> well, I don't know. You tell me for yourself. So many of them here. And 30 years ago, when Huzur was here, it was almost an impossibility trying to convince parents to send their children to school. 30 years on, look at the numbers of students here. Ooh. Salaga was hundreds of miles away from the rapidly progressing winds of Accra. If this region of Ghana was to progress, then the people had to embrace secular education. Jamaat had built a small school, but the real challenge was getting the students. At the time Huzu came here, secular education was considered a taboo, a grievous sin. When the Jamaat established the school, the classrooms were pretty much empty. If you talk of Salaga in those days, Salaga was a place where first people were not interested in education. And so if they are not interested in education, they are not going to promote education. So somebody going there is not going to be encouraged. It is as simple as that. Now to talk of Salaga Tia Ahmadiyya Senior High School, you're talking of a secondary school in the most deprived area of Ghana, where there are no facilities whatsoever for any living. Water is a problem, electricity is a problem, where even to lay your head is a problem. But he endured. Wonderful thing about him is he never complained, never, ever, for all the eight years that he lived here, did we see anything of the kind. 
But I can tell you that it was not easy to live in Sabaka. It was during this time the Jamaat, with the efforts of the then chief of the area, the Kimbewura, had to go around to convince people to send their children to school for secular education. It was during this time that Huzu came into the picture and it took a lot of resolve, dedication and resilience from Huzu to be able to add to the numbers of children who came to school. He had to help in building the amenities, the infrastructure and provide accommodation for some of uh, the students and almost all of them had free education and their meals heavily subsidized for them. Mr. Dimbier is the current headmaster of the school and he can give us an insight into the role Hazu played in the development of this school. I am all right. I'm also fine. And how is the school? Very fine. Alhamdulillah. We would like to take a look around the campus. Mr. Dimbier takes us to the original block, which was refurbished by Hazu. At the time, this was the only building. This is old Amas, the first structure built on this site in 1976 that has four classrooms. So uh, current Huzu may have taught in this structure because uh, he was here when? 1977. And so definitely as a headmaster, he did not only do administrative work, he also did some teaching in the classrooms. Oh, so headmasters at the time were not only doing administration work, they were also uh, part fully participating exactly in, in that. teaching. They so it's very possible that uh, our current zoo may have taught in one of these classrooms here. Yes, just right. that, exactly so. Oh, it, it you, see, be, you see yeah. the students there mm. and the classrooms, mm. so possibly. Uh, you, you, you would have, have taught here. Yes. So can we go inside the classroom yes. and just uh, yeah, yeah, replay well. in our own minds what uh, the situation used to be like. Yes. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, uh, how you all doing? Oh, and so so uh, we now have a full classroom. This is about how many students? Uh, that's about uh, 60 plus students. 60 plus students. Yes. But 30 years ago, it was very difficult to even have uh, up to 15 students no, in a class like no. this. The whole we, school population whoa. was 15. The whole school? The whole school so, population was 15. <laughs> Amazing. And look at the number of girls in this classroom alone. Mm -hmm. But you had only three girls in 1971. Wow. The whole school, the whole school population... was 15, 1, 5. 12 mm. boys mm. and 3 girls. Wow. All the struggle they had to go through, the founding fathers of this school, including Huzu. Yes. What has it achieved? Has it's, it impacted on the society, the community around? It's, it's beneficial. Mm. It's, it's terribly uh, rewarding mm -hmm. that you look at the population the accessibility of it. Mm. Uh, the, the district director of education acknowledged that this school is one of the schools that admits the chunk of the junior high school graduates mm. in the whole district. Tell me about it. Students and parents come to beg for admissions. At the times we switch off our mobile phones. Uh, at the times we uh, run uh, away. <laughs> at the times we put on the notice that uh, admissions closed and, and, still and people still come to seek admission. From a very humble beginning and difficulties, a lot of sacrifices put in the school, it has paid off. We have a current student population of 1,200, made up of all shades of uh, students, um, talking about religions and uh, all around the country make up this population. The infrastructural uh, status of the school is quite uh, commendable. We have uh, 25 classrooms, two giant dormitories for boys and girls, and there are still some being uh, constructed. Then uh, we also have uh, a library facility, we have a uh, uh, science lab, we, we have other uh, facilities in the school. Then uh, if you want to look at generally the programs that we run in the school, 
the school started with two programs, mm -hmm. business and general arts. Today, we have five programs, business, general arts, science, agri and home economics. Mm. These are the five programs run in the school and uh, highly competitive. Since its humble beginnings, TI Salaga has made rapid progress through the years and in its course it has shaped the lives of people throughout the entire region. And so 30 years on after the establishment of this school, I can't imagine that this school has come this far. Uh, this is the cadet corps of the school and uh, doing a match pass um, some of the dignitaries on the days there. And some of those people you see on the days they actually include uh, very high level uh, government officials, some of them are high level uh, district chief executives and all that. And they, some of them did attend this school. And this is how far this school has come. And uh, you can't, one can only imagine the kind of sacrifice that had to go into establishing this school. The original school at the time of Hazu's arrival was a disused, abandoned building and Hazu literally had to rebuild the school from the ground up. Salaga is 90 miles away from the nearest city of Tamale where all the supplies for the school had to be bought from. If he needs anything he cannot get from the market because it's a small place so he has to travel to a place like Tamale or to go to Kumasi. Those days, one, you wouldn't even have that luxury of thinking about how many hours are you going to take. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. Two, which means of the uh, transport was going to carry you. Mm. Is it a tractor yeah. or that? The mummy trucks, there was one Tata bus mm -hmm. that served from Tamale to Makango. Mm. But even the third day, I was very tiny. I had to struggle between people before I could why, get why to the gates. Days? Did you have a breakdown? No, your, yeah. that was the only means for so many people. Yes, yeah, so? The struggle and the competition was high. This was in 83? 83, 83. And Huzuru was here in 77 and 79. And so by 83, things may have even improved mm, a bit. Better. Oh. Hazur would travel on public transport available at the time himself 90 miles on dusty broken roads to Tamale and bring building materials 90 miles back. And public transport in northern Ghana at that time wasn't exactly what you may have in mind. This is the kind of road that Hazur would travel on any time he needed to travel between Salaga and Tamale whenever he needed any small thing for his family or for himself. And um, when he was lucky, he would do this journey on a bus. Otherwise, he had no other choice but to make the journey 90 miles away from here on, well, the notorious mode of transportation known in Ghana as bone shaker. It's a sort of uh, truck made of wood, you know, timber. It's not the type of, uh, you know, uh, metallic, you know, vehicles that we know of. So they call it bone shaker because even the seat is made up of just uh, timber of that, you know, uh, width. We put it there and then you sit on it. Sometimes you take about two days to recover from the kind of pain you, you receive after riding in a vehicle. And it's usually it's made of um, uh, wooden uh, structures um, and uh, with big ties, sometimes uh, double ties uh, behind it. And uh, usually it's a, it's a rickety vehicle, as you can see, not, <laughs> not much can be said. But during the time Huzu was here, these are the kinds of vehicles he used to travel on whenever he didn't have the government vehicle that would usually take him from Makango to uh, Tamale uh, through Salaga and all that. So these are the kind of vehicles he used to ride on. Now, what you actually see here is a modern type of bone shaker. We couldn't lay hands on the type that Huzu himself used to ride on, but uh, we are fortunate to have a replica uh, from the TI Amadea Secondary School in Salaga. I'll, I'll now jump on the bone shaker track and uh, have a ride and just have a feel of what Huzu may have been going through whenever he took a ride on a bone shaker. 
This is a real life experience about what I must do as This is my first experience, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> this is only the beginning for Abdul Hai, but he is about to find out what bone shaker really means. So I am riding in a modern day bone shaker. This is not the exact uh, type you would find 30 years uh, ago. Uh, can you tell me your experiences in riding in bone shakers? Actually, uh, riding in bone shaker is a hell. <laughs> if you look at it, at the end of the day, when you get to your destination, you can best tell whether it's your, your, your joints, your waist, your pain, uh, your eyes. You can't even tell exactly which part of your body that is disturbing you. Yeah, what are some of the challenges in uh, riding on a bone shaker? Have you ever been in, in, in an accident or something? Oh, for the bone shaker, accident in bone shaker, most of the times a lot of people die, just like fouls. Because when the vehicle is landing, there's nothing to protect you. And how often do bone shakers break down in terms of the engine, maybe brake failures and all? Oh, uh, particularly this part of the country, mm. most of our bone shakers don't even have brakes. So they use the GS to control. <laughs> so, so like, they don't have what? They don't have brakes. <laughs> so, so, so how do they stop? So, so, so when he's going, you uh -huh. see that the driver use the, the GS. Uh -huh. If he want, he's accelerating right. so much, he will push it to the fence. In other so that you see that the vehicle will be shaking, ejecting <laughs> here and there. Then sometimes they, they Sometimes the, the driver mate will jump down, push the track, uh, the, a chalk, then the vehicle will run over it and will pick it and push it for the second time before the vehicle is able to slow down. I can't believe it. With his bag. This man can do the job. Look at him there. So, so, so in a situation where the driver has to make an emergency stop, what happens? That is why we have a lot of accidents in the system because it cannot stop when it's in, each, in terms of emergency stop. So, so, so what this means and what it tells me is that Uzu was so humble that any time he could not get a ride on a government bus, he would join one of these trucks. And I, I just told you that this truck is more comfortable than what was used uh, 30 years ago. This is what we meant when we said the public transport which Hazu used to take for 90 miles and back. Oh, what a ride, man. What a ride. I can't believe this. One of the lovely rides in town. <laughs> to me, that dance was too much. I uh, know. Uh, when I even ride in this Bosheka, we assume the real Bosheka Hazu used. How I feel. It's a Lamasuna. Yamina. From Salaga. There was a big city called Tomale. We used to go there for building material because at that time we were building some school block, even for your commodities like groceries and all things, sort of things. There was no proper means of transport. There was only one government transport bus. We used to come from Tomale in the morning time and one in the evening time. Nobody knows at what time it will get broken down and uh, you are stranded on the way. Once I and uh, our missionary Razak Bhatsa were traveling to, to, to Tamale, you would not find any place even to stand there. So what we used to do is take the bus when it reaches to Salaga and go to the end of the road, 17 miles further, and there you could easily get some seat. So we used to do 34 miles extra travel for getting a seat. One day, bus uh, got broken down there. It was evening time. I was uh, going to purchase some building material for our building. We were contractor there, we were builder there, we were everybody. It was, I was everything there. I was having some big amount in my briefcase. Night was fast approaching and I was afraid that as for me, it doesn't matter, but this money, somebody can snatch the bag and then take it away. And anyway, eight, nine, ten, so later on they announced that uh, now they have sent the message to Tamale, the bus will soon come. And that soon was after eight hours. So we spent the whole night there. I found some bench there. I sat on it and uh, held my briefcase 
very, very firmly. And I asked Mawli Sahib that I think half night you sleep and half night I sleep. The next morning, around 4 o'clock in the morning, the bus came and we climbed on it eh? and reached Tumale. And that was also a good adventure. Islam has been brought by Allah. Let them merge it. It is the way to Allah. Well, so far I've felt it. I've seen it all and I've heard it all from people who lived with Uzuru whilst he stayed in Salaga. Now these people tell me that while Huzuru lived with them, he exhibited so much resilience, resolve, commitment and the fear of God to the extent that it reflected in whatever he did. I'm now on my way to Esacho where Huzuru was posted to after three years of service in Salaga to speak to a few people about the life he led whilst he stayed here. After three years of service in Salaga, Hazu was posted to another small and unknown town of Hasarcher. Hasarcher lies at a distance of just over a mile from another small town, Ikrafu, which holds immense importance for Jamaat, as this was the birthplace of Ahmadiyyat in Ghana. Hasarcher was no Salaga. Even today, it is an incredibly small town. And even if the harsh savanna of the north was switched with a more greener area, Asarcher did not come without its challenges for Hazu. Even here, getting students to come to school was no easy task. But it was the wise Ikumfi Paramount Chief Nana Achin who gave his complete support for the school and welcomed the Jamaat to run it. We're here to meet the chief's son, Augustus Achin who can throw more light on Hazu's time in Asacha. Uh, fine, how are you too? I'm very fine. Um, that's good, that's good. Can you tell me about uh, Nanachin, your father, who used to be chief here? Oh uh, yeah, Nanachin, he was the um, uh, the chief of a kunfi, mm. traditional area. And he ruled for almost 40 years. And even one time he was a presidential commissioner during the Nkrumah regime. Wow. When he was not, when Nkrumah is not there, he used to replace Nkrumah. Those days, Nkrumah, the first president, the of first president of of, of Ghana. Uh -huh. So this, this is where he used to live. Where he went. I've heard there was a man yeah. who came from Pakistan, did uh, some work in the northern region, okay. and then was posted to this very town. Okay, yes, yes, And uh, yes, your yes. father, did, what did your father do for him? Yes, you? the same thing. My father also gave. Gave he gave his complete. Do you remember this man? I, re I remember that what, man. What was he was his a, name? He was a Ahmed. Mr. Ahmed. Something, something that's, Ahmed. That's what you remember, yes, Mr. Ahmed. Yes, that's what I'm. Yes. Okay. He was the uh, the headmaster of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he came. I think when he came, my father welcomed him very well, mm. and 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 he gave out his burden, yes. complete burden to him, on free of charge. Oh. Because my father want the school to come and stay. Can stay. I see that building? Yes, you can see. The very first place. Exactly, your very dad gave first to him. place my dad gave to him. To him. So, uh, this is the building. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. This is the building. Wow. This is where my father gave it to the uh, the first headmaster of the Ahmadiyya. Do you remember the first day he moved in? Uh, yes, he, he he he. They brought him from Accra. Mm. So he. That time, my father have already assured the Amil yeah. in Ghana mm. that whoever comes as, as the headmaster, he is prepared to give out his burden to him. So the burden was just there, standby for any who ever who comes in. So, so your dad was ready to release his building yeah. uh, to accommodate the headmaster of the Ahmadiyya Secondary uh, School uh, of the uh, Ahmadiyya School. Exactly. Yeah, the exactly. Uh, not, we, not, not even, not even. Uh, the, 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 the accommodation of the even the headmaster alone. He also give out other burdens also for schools and then dormitories as well. And the schools are also here. Which well, I think we can. Oh, just here. Yes, just wow. here. Oh, Before yeah. then, it was a market. Mm. But because my father want the school to come and stay, yes. he bought these brick brick blocks mm -hmm. and then fence wall it. Mm -hmm. For the meantime, 
the students should be here. Mm. So that's the form one, form two, form three. Mm. And those days, people doesn't want to patronize. People doesn't want to attend schools. Mm. So my father made it compulsory that each and every person in this community should try and bring one of his child to the school. Mm. So my father set an example by sending his two daughters. Mm -hmm. Oh, daughters? Yes. Wow. Daughters. He set that example mm. so that he can hold people to, 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 to that. Here, eventually, it was a market. Mm. This place was a market. Yeah. But because there was no option, mm. so my father sat down and then he said, no, compulsory, because if he made a big, a, a least mistake, mm -hmm. the school will not come to stay. Yeah. So he converted this market into the school. Mm. He made this place a school by force. <laughs> the headmaster, yes. he was a very good friend to my father. Really? So, yes, that Ahmed. Mm. Was, uh, but he was so nice. And he also he was very committed to the school. He liked the school, and he, and every day he want things to be put in order. Mm. Uh, he was good. Mm. That man was good. He, if not because of him, like this school would not come to stay. Yeah. So now the school uh, is at a crossroad mm. between a crossroad and a satchel. Mm. So with time, my father sat down. He, he he My father found out that no, the place was growing. Yeah. The school was growing. Oh. Mm. Why don't do I look a, la a big place for them mm. as a land mm. for them mm. to build a big school? So he started the move. Oh, so so, so he mo he moved himself. He moved and then he went to in between a crawfo and a satchel. Mm. And we had a very big land there. That time I was a young guy and I was following my father. I think he was to, in the bush to, himself. So so we my have father, to go to that school. Yes, we, we have, have to go to, go to that, see, that, 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 the, that. The school. original school, which used to be here, it had, had to move completely. To the because place. because it had the numbers exceeded what this building exactly whoa exactly whoa, great. Chief Nana Achin was so committed to bringing education to his people that he put up one of his personal houses as accommodation for Hazu and the students. Yes, this is the building. This is where uh, Mr. Ahmed was staying. Mm. This is where my father gave. This is where uh, our president Huzu used to live. Yes. Uh, where exactly? Uh, it's a very big house. Yes, we can. The whole house. The whole house. He was the whole house he belonged was, to him. No, he was occupying. He was occupying the top. Oh, okay. And then some of the students were down. Woo! So he shared a building. Yes. With students. Exactly. <laughs> Did he ever complain? Did he, he ever th he he never, feel diminished? He never. He never. The man. No. This one, that's why I was saying that the man was so good to ascend mm. that. He also was committed mm. and, 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 and he liked the, the, the actually the job they've given to him. Mm -hmm. And he performed the job marvelously. Wow. Yeah. So now the main, the main entrance. Mm -hmm. The whole place was for him, was given out to him. You mean the top? The th he was staying at the top, so yeah. we will go there. Okay. We will go to the top. Yes. yes. So let's go there. Let's go there. So, uh, yeah. Oh, it's quite, it's, Have a look. Quite, it's, it's quite a narrow staircase. That's the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, has anything changed That's in the kitchen? kitchen? No, oh, no, nothing. Do yes. you remember some of the food staff? For instance, you, know, you have chapati. Um, actually, mm. when I come, I take, he gives me tea and egg. Mm -hmm. A cooked egg. So the egg was fried here, right here. He, in he doesn't fly. He doesn't normally fly his egg. Mm -hmm. He cook it. Cooked one. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh, it doesn't fly there. Mm. So let me take you to where I've been taking when I come. <laughs> give, those, that, those days I was very young. <laughs> 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 it's a two man. He loves his bank food. And who made him love tea and egg? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a big hall. Yes. It's, it's, it's a very big hall. Yes, that's the hall. Yes. Yes, uh -huh. that's the hall. Okay. When I come to him, mm -hmm. you let me sit down here. The wife of the person. Oh, there was a dining table here. Yes, yes dining table here. And, and then there was a and then similar a CC. Similar CC. Okay. This man yeah. who came all the way from Pakistan yeah. and will come down to the level of the local people yeah. who don't complain about facilities that yeah. were lacking. Yeah. Uh, you as a child yeah. and your father's own opinion. Yeah. What was, what would you say about him? 
Oh, the man, the man is the type of person which I think if you give him any position or any, he's very responsible. Mm. The man is very, that's why I'm saying that I'm not doubting where he has reached now. Okay. He, he, he speaks in his mind. Mm. The man always speaks his, his mind. He doesn't have anything within him. That's how I see him. So the day he announced that he was leaving this house, yeah. what was the mood in the house? Uh, actually, my father didn't like it. But it's like something like a contract. The mm -hmm. contract has expired. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he has to go back to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have no option. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Only it is only the Amin those days mm -hmm. who can say, okay, I'll renew the contract for you mm -hmm. to stay back. Mm -hmm. But I think for that uh, those days, then he or he, he was also feeling that at, at least he has done enough, mm -hmm. and the school has gotten a foundation. Therefore, he can leave to Pakistan. So normally, mm. normally that's where, uh, if my father, yeah. my father, he stays at that building where I show you. Yeah. So if he is coming with his car, he will just park here, and then he will say, call me the white man. <laughs> so they will call the white, they will call him, and then he will come here, yeah. and then maybe relax here. Then my father will be talking to him. Mm whatever concerning the school. Mm -hmm. He is very neat, cleanliness mm -hmm. and discipline. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I, I could remember from him. But discipline and then uh, cleanliness, it was part of. He, have, he, I, 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 he born one, one, once he was having one, 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 one child. That's what you can remember? Yes, that's what I can Did remember. he ever play with a child? He, he... They play, always he was handling the child. Uh -huh. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember very well. Uh -huh. He one, a, ba a baby boy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Always he was with him. Now, always. Now that baby boy is a big man. I, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's like you. Uh, yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about water supply. And uh, water time, when he was here. is true. The water, the water supply, the water was a very big problem. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the riverside mm -hmm. to take some water. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In terms of bathing, and even though this, there, there was no this pure water. Now it may seem a little more comfortable compared to Salaga, but living here again was not very simple. The water supply was very erratic which meant water for Hazu's use had to be obtained from a nearby stream most of the times. So at the time Hazu lived here in this actual water supply was very erratic. It was very, very inconsistent. I am here with uh, Mr. Abdurrahman Ensil here at the river and he used to help Hazu when he stayed here at this actual. What, what, what used to happen? Can you describe to me what, what used to happen here? Well, uh, it's actual we have uh, pipe bone water mm. as such. So usually, I do send water home mm. for his activities over there. Uh, he's a man of uh, himself. He loves everybody. This is not your ideal running water, the ideal kind of water you'd want to use even for, your, for flushing your toilet, because it's not as clean as pipe bone water would be, or as clean as even the water we use in our toilets these days. But this is the sort of water Uzu would use for other activities uh, in his home when he lived here in Isacho. <coughs> oh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Whoa, save him, man. I can't have him. Okay. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, 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 okay, okay. I think I'm okay. It's okay. It's okay now. Okay. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> No, I can't. No, 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 I can't. Oh, let, 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 let me help you. Okay. Let me help you. <gasps> then take, take the uh, smaller one. <laughs> okay. This, this, this is almost like it's as heavy as a, a 50, 50 kilogram cement oh, bag. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Yes. But uh, oh, this road is not fine. So mm. let's take this road. Be careful unless you fall down. Yeah. If I fall, uh, no I, problem. I, I, you're you're, you're a strong man. Fall. But if you fall, there will be a <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> With the blessings of Allah and the continued efforts of Hazur and Chief Nana Achin, the school at Asarchar grew so much
that Chief Nana Achen decided to donate 60 acres of his land at Ikrafu to construct a much larger school which was to accommodate hundreds of students. This school was built by Hazu from the ground up and the change in location meant that Jamaat decided there should be permanent residence for the headmaster on site. We're going to the headmaster's bungalow on site at T.I. Akumfi Senior High School to meet a very old acquaintance of Hazur. Good morning. My name is Abdul Hai Mumen. What's your name? Your full name? George Ankuma. George Ankuma? Yeah. Uh, you used to work in this house? Yes. Who were you working for when you used to work in this house? In the headmaster Nineteen eighty two, eighty three. I have a beer when you are home or you watch. I have a beer, Nedano table, was a sea. Never any. I have a beer, So this is where Uzu used to stay and live, and um, this was his bedroom uh, Bed in, in, in a nutshell. Now, me papa. Asana, you may be walk, baby, I'm Asana. Also, you are a family by Mepi Paha. No coins, Nadina, no machet, Tibu Nadia, Bia, or Patrami, and Yibia, my. So, what do you remember about this man, Huzu Mirza Masu Ahmed? Me kai pa nazu headmaster abibia obeshi abibia o kache de o ju kan yebra na yebo niye ni kai yemfa nyame unfe enye yebibia so ne se kwetu ni yangu pwa o brand onko kan na o tu yapo suda enye abotar ado pa abotar so we are both aware that you mama don't want to abort your brother. And the only thing that we put in our mind, we to me is that we are quite naturally not in favor of the man. We to me try to make him copy my medical pension. Oh yeah, I do yeah. We to me we want to do what the catcher now. We to me boy will scare up him. So, what was his relationship with you as a person like? Because obviously he was the master, he was the headmaster of the school, and you were just a mere servant. Did he ever make you feel like you were just a mere servant? You know, naturally, me too. Nancy Shabira or the Maman Bira, and the old to quiet cry, or to me, Mako, bear three days cry or mission a cramp, or to me, Mako, Sunday, or Jimmy, now Meso Mijinidi. Nan mo fra benu or a mo fra mino neba hel eh okas na fella okay I'm na mo fra mino na mi wo na e e wo ha enji na wo ni na wo pemasem. The blessings of the divinely inspired Nusra Jahan scheme on Ghana have been far-reaching and wide. Through the prayers and constant guidance of Khilafat. The people of Ghana have been on the receiving end of high quality education, especially in the remotest parts of the country, where the future leaders of tomorrow are being groomed by the dedicated teachers and devotees such as Hazur. And we really did not have to look far for evidence. Miss Forstein is an ex-student of Hazur and is currently the assistant headmistress for one of the biggest schools in the region. Fine, thank you. You were an old school student here? How long ago was this? I was here in 1983 on this very compound. But the school did not start from this compound? No, the school started from the surgery, mm -hmm. the market center there. Uh, were you there as well? Yes. And that was in? 1980. So at the time that you were a student on the other campus yes. and then moving here, can you remember some of the headmasters along the way? Yes, I quite remember. Masu, Masu, um, yes. He was the headmaster who brought us here. Okay. So initially, he allowed us to be coming here to plant the trees you see alongside oh. the road and the campus. Oh, can, you, can you point to one of the trees if you can remember? This oh. some, yes. This one, 
beginning from the gate mm -hmm. all trees wow. and he was involved mm -hmm. so the trees on the campus he was part of it that we planted wow. yes to yeah. give shade to the school because the school was bare mm -hmm. and he did that before he moved us to the school here so when you moved here what was the infrastructure like well, did we have all these buildings here no uh -huh. we moved here with this block so when you moved here we didn't have all these buildings no, no, no. Uh, just uh, this block tell me more there were five classrooms, so we shared five classrooms. Mm. And that room was his uh, Mizra unit office. Oh, the first one there. The one. Wow, I'd like to have a look. There yeah. were classrooms mm. for us. Yeah. And I came to Form 3 here. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one of the very Same early classrooms. Classroom. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you all doing? Yeah. Same classroom. It's only the whiteboard that has been changed. Yeah. Yes, it was a blackboard. Mm. So, 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 so what do you remember about some of your teachers? Whenever they came to the classroom, what would they usually do? Do you remember those days 30 years back? Yes, 30 yeah. years back. I remember some of them. A teacher we used to call Mizie, who teaches um, French. Mm. Yes. He was short and he easily got annoyed. So the least thing he would get annoyed at walk out from the classroom <laughs> but at a point in time he will come and settle us down and yeah. we'll continue all right yes. mm. uh, so so uh, at the time Mirza Masu Ahmed was your headmaster mm -hmm. uh, what kind of headmaster was he hmm. was he the strict type the one no, who insists that the things be done the right way was he the soft type one who just allow you to do anything you wanted to do at all Israel was calm but strict and firm, would wish things are done well. Mm. Yes. So I quite remember mm -hmm. he was meeting us here. That yes. is where we're having our Sunday morning. Where is that? Out here. Out here. Oh, wow. Okay. This is where you used to meet yes. during uh, your morning assemblies yes. and all that. Do you remember him saying anything, addressing the assembly in any way? Here. Um, if we want to complete school, then we should know how to behave well. And then um, becoming recalcitrant will not help us. Mm. And he knows he is here to help us to learn and grow up well mm. for the society. Mm. Yes. So we should listen to whatever they tell us here. Not to break school rules and not to do things that put the name of the school into the school. So now um, you are assistant headmistress in one of the biggest senior secondary schools in Ghana. How would you say this school and uh, the, the, the moral lessons taught, especially by Mirza Masru Ahmed, how would you say that has influenced your life? Uh, it has influenced my life greatly because I took some of the things he said as I'm talking about. And he made me to develop interest in the Islamic religious knowledge. And I offered that and had one. And that Islamic religious knowledge I had one took me to training college at Ula. What I would tell him was when I was on the field, he put me in a truck to run. I don't run. He said I should run. You mean and sports? He, yes. Oh, okay. And he followed me with a cane. For the finish that. Finish that. Finish that. Finish that. Finish that. So he made me to end oh, my race. Okay. Yes. I so, can't remember this. Yeah. So that's one if I tell him. You don't remember. remember. We're off to meet another person who had the privilege of serving Hazu while he was headmaster here. Mr. Adam Saga, how are you doing? I'm also very fine. Um, when the school was first established, I mean this very campus, who was the headmaster? Okay, the school started at Mr. Yes. Yeah, on 1971. Yeah, I mean when you moved here to this campus, do you remember who the headmaster was? It was my, uh, the, the Uzu. It was Uzu, Mirza, Masru, okay. Ahmed. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And um, you were working here at the time. Yeah. In what I, capacity? I was the messenger. You were the messenger, yeah, yeah, and he was the headmaster. Yeah, yeah. So being the headmaster, obviously he had an office. Where was yeah. it? Oh, this place. Oh, this, this. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. You okay. Can see from so here. all right. So has anything changed? Oh, this? oh yes, a big thing. There's yeah. a cupboard here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this was the office, just the small room. Actually, this was the office. Oh, wow. 
this, <laughs> this, this looks more like a, a oh, storeroom yes. in somebody's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but this used to be the office. office. And being the messenger, did, he, did you ever hear him complain about being this place, being a small office, and that he couldn't oh, no, no. from here? So, first of all, start by telling me what your duties were. What, what? Being a, yeah, being a messenger, I have to go to him, correct the key, open the name, clean everything here, and arrange the papers, everything, mm. before he comes. Okay. So, so in case uh, he needs you to send a letter to some place or anything, in case he needs something from the house, he just give you a note, mm -hmm. go to the house and give it to the, the, the wife, and then he also give you, in case he needed it, yeah. also have to. Oh, yeah. at the time there were no telephones. No, 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 have mobile no, no, no. phones, so he couldn't ring no, the house, no, 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 so no, no, no. he had to he give you a note. Yeah. And so whenever he called you in to give you instructions, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where would you be? Would you be standing here? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. And then put my bag. <laughs> okay, so Adam Saka. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so you as a messenger at the time, how did he relate to you? Was he commandeering? Was he always oh, he so authoritative? No, no, no. He was very kind to me. Mm -hmm. so kind to me. Tell us more. We, we, I want to tell me more about the relationship. If you do something, you come to him. Mm -hmm. Be open and then go to him. You mm. explain things to him. If it is money, if anything else, you go to him. He will listen to you and then he will help you. Whatever you need, you give it to him. Tell yeah. us about the beginning of the school and the developments that you are now talking about. The beginning of the school, you see, as I said earlier, uh, they were forced to give scholarship. Because there were few people at this school to So the chief that was the man who of the country, the traditional area, called all the, the, the country, the, 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 the town people, even the chiefs, I need three people from you, from your, your town, so that they all send to the same school, so that the school will be filled up. This is what they started at the And today was yes. the situation. Exactly. And this time, um, at the beginning, there was a lot of people from outside, even some from Accra, from the northern, the whole way. It's plain to see that nearly everyone who interacted with Hazur at any level was left with a deep impression of his humility and humanity. The school itself is a living example of the tender love and care of Hazur. From a humble office and one block, today T.I. Ikumfi Senior High School is a massive facility catering for the educational and essential needs of well over a thousand young minds. The man responsible for it today is the current headmaster of the school. Asalaamu Alaikum sir. Alaikum Asalaam. My name is Abdul Hai Mumin. Who are you sir? Uh, well, I'm the headmaster of the school, Mr. Mohammed Akun. So when you moved to this premises at that time, over 30 years ago, yes. uh, the population was just a little over 100. Over 100. What is the population today? As today starts? is 1,346. Oh, <laughs> that's a huge number. Yes. And, uh, you, you, you contain all of them on this campus? On this campus. In fact, we have uh, almost uh, three, four hundred being this students who come from town. Mm. The remaining around about 900 yes. are on campus. 1,346, you said? Yes. That's a huge number. Yes, are students true. crowded in classrooms? Not so much. Hello, good morning. How are you? Yeah. Okay. Not so, so much. All right. So stu every student has a desk to himself? Yes. At least in the school, every mm. student has a desk to himself. So, himself. so, so teaching and learning Both is relatively comfortable yes. in, in the school. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can, can you tell us some of the courses you run in the school? Basically, we run the general art course, mm. we have a general science course, we have a business course. We have a technical course and then we have a vocational course. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Ekunfi Amas. Wa fearing and honest. Excellent Amas. Disciplined and hard work. E Amas. Lovely school of Khalifas. Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Ekunfi Amas. <laughs> All right. So did you attend the school yourself? No. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, wow. I'm a but, pro of Kumasi. Okay, but then um, I'm sure this school has produced some excellent people for the outer world out there. Yes. Can we name a few of these people? Huh? Well, uh, one whose name comes to mind easily yes. is uh, the Honorable H.C. Hammond, <laughs> who was a pastor of the school. Yes. Currently, in fact, formerly he was the uh, Deputy Internal uh, Interior Minister. 
then later on became the energy minister. The deputy the, energy the, minister. Deputy energy minister mm. of the country. Mm. We have uh, Bashudin Hayford, who is uh, a, a very good uh, coach in the country, mm -hmm. who is now managing uh, Mediama uh, Football Club. Yeah. And uh, we have one Mr. Abakan, who was a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Whoa, whoa. I'm sure and if I gave you the whole day, yes. you keep going on because uh, you've just mentioned a top government official yes. produced from this school, very yes. top level government official, a top level national coach, a yes. Ghanaian coach, yes. a footballing coach yes. from this country. And yes. then you also mentioned a lecturer yes. at the yes. university. Yes. Whoa. So, uh, how about the students in the school right now? What was the uh, level of discipline? Uh, you know, the, the, if you talk about education, you are talking about morality, mm. sporting, academic, and all those things well harnessed mm. to bring the best out of the children that you handle. Mm. Uh, at the moment, I can say with that kind of confidence that we are doing our best. We have instilled some kind of moral talks in the school. Mm. Every Monday morning, we meet at assembly and reorientate the minds of the students to conform to the the, the, the doctrine of the mission, mm. the teachings of the mission, mm. so that they can prepare themselves for life in future. You, you just talked about discipline. Mm. Yes. Now, students who are not necessarily Muslims, or for that matter, Ahmadis, mm. uh, how comfortable are they within the premises of the school? Our, our basic principle in this school is that there is no compulsion in religion. Everybody is allowed to watch the way he or she wants. And another principle that we use is that nobody should be converted whilst in school here. Of course, after going to the system, having seen the good side of Islam, if you decide to change when you go out, that one is not our problem. But here, we don't intentionally go around to convert. Uh, I've been speaking to a few people who were on this very campus from its uh, very inception. And they tell me that the initial headmasters used to teach. Have you taught before? Yes. Last year, when they were going to do their exams, uh, uh, I, I realized that there were some few problems uh, with the students. Uh, so I had to go so in. So what do you teach? What subject is Chemistry is my subject. Oh, I fear chemistry. Yeah. But can you teach us some chemistry, sir? No problem. OK. No problem. I, I'm just pretending to be part of the students okay. here. Um, <laughs> probably I'm the tallest student in your class, sir. <laughs> Now, because you are all in the first year, and therefore moving, you are in the second year? Yes. Okay. I want to test your knowledge about how the atom is like. You know, in everything, the base is very important. And the base of life is what we refer to as atom. We've had enough here because, yes. you know, I am used to <laughs> similes and metaphors. But not atoms and uh, smallest indivisible <laughs> articles and all that. Thank you very much, class. We, we appreciate your time. I had the opportunity to go to London through the mission. Okay. So I was there when the message came that would you want to see me? <laughs> I entered the room. He received me. Mm -hmm. Very warmly. And that was your first time of meeting That's him? My first time of meeting him in the room for 30, 45 minutes in his office. So he started asking questions about the school, mm -hmm. the population at that time, the staff. Some of the questions that he asked were this. So that did, did he express interest in the school? You, you could very, see passion. I, I, I could see from this man that the love he has for this school mm -hmm. is so much. Wow. So much that he wants to see this school develop very well. Then he, will, he tried to compare other schools and then ask whether my school is doing very well. I told him yes, but there's still more to be done. Mm -hmm. He looked at me almost after the conversation and he asked me, Mr. Akonu, can you help in the development of this school? Is it possible you can do it like you have done in other schools? At that moment, I became unsettled. And I didn't know what I said. But immediately what I, 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 I opened my mind, what came out of what yes, yes sir, I will do it. You know, when he was here, he was so affable, so free to talk to. And you will see an aura of spirituality around him. That aura lingers on in the school. No matter what you do, you cannot revolt. 
in this school. We are very hopeful that in the next few years, you will come here and you see a different environment Inshallah. altogether. Inshallah. So, when you interacted with Huzu in his office, out of the numerous schools uh, Madia has in uh, the country, he was particular in detail about what happens in Ekofo TI Ahmadiyya Secondary School. What did that tell you about Huzu and his love and passion for this school? In Esachel, he stayed here for four good years. So he had a lot of interaction with the people in this area. And that informed me about the type of passion he had for this school, for which he had to devote much of his time to ask me questions about this school. You realize that the people in this area seem to have helped him in so many, uh, in so many ways. So he developed love for the people, not necessarily the school, because he occasionally asked questions about individuals mm. within this society. Mm -hmm. Is this person there? Is this person there? Yes, then I will answer. So he had that kind of special passion. I don't know, but I saw it in his eyes because of the way he was answering, asking the questions. For this particular school, he stayed here for four years. Then another issue which is also very important is that he brought the school from the town to this environment. So if the school thrives, it thrives on his prayers. Mm -hmm. So he has that attachment to this school uh -huh. because of the fact that he took the school from the town mm -hmm. and virtually brought it here. Okay. Nothing available on the land here, started the process and then wanting to make sure that this school that he started, this school that he built, this school that he sacrificed everything for, this school that his family all had to come here to sacrifice, will not die. Well, my concern is not only with the Ahmadis in Africa, but with Africa itself. I'm a religious leader who believes in total dedication to the cause of Allah and if you are honest in their dedication then you must be dedicated to his creation. I am training and instructing my community according to the best education and teachings in Islam. That is to say, serve the cause of humanity just for the love of it. <laughs> The concern and compassion that the Khulafa hold for humanity is unparalleled. Ever since the Khulafa set foot on the African land, they immediately set in motion plans that would enable the African people to rise up and embrace a brighter future. By the early 80s, the Nusra Jahan scheme was bearing fruit all over Africa. It was time to take another leap. It just so happened that by Allah's design, the world came to witness another miracle, and this time through the hands of Sahib Zada Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad. Post-colonial West Africa was at a constant struggle to support its economies, and Ghana was no exception. This is before the discovery of oil. Other than the export of a few food items, such as cocoa and fish, there wasn't much else bringing enough revenue for Ghana. On top of that, one of the most basic requirements of food was not produced at all, but in fact imported from overseas. Due to harsh weather conditions, lack of fertile soil and water, wheat could not be produced in Ghana. Even today, more than 90% of wheat in Ghana is imported from the US. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih IV rahmahullah, decided it was time for change. Sahib Zada Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad was an accomplished agriculturist with a master's degree in agriculture, and he was stationed in Asachar as headmaster for the T.I. Ahmadiyya Secondary School at the time. All the trees here were originally planted by Hazur when the school was moved to this location. Not only this, but Hazur for the first time in Ghana had experimented with growing soya bean at the school, which was an incredible success. So much so that the then president of Ghana, Dr. Hila Liman, took a whole sackful away with him after his inspection of the school. This was to be the start of a groundbreaking project, initiated by Hazrat Khalifatul Masih IV, Rahmullah, 
and for this task, Hazrat Sahib Zada Mirza Masroor Ahmad was located to the north, this time to Tamale, to start what would come to be known as the Ahmadiyya Agriculture Project. Welcome to Tamale, capital of the northern region of Ghana. The Ahmadiyya Agriculture Project required the right balance of cool weather, fertile soil and easy access to water. The committee set up by Hazrat Khalifa al the IV Rahmahullah, for the project, which included Hazur, was tasked with experimenting with growing wheat, corn, okra and other vegetables. Areas around Tamale next to the rivers during the relatively cooler Harmatan season were the best place for the experiment. This wasn't the first time this was being done. Several government-backed projects had already tried unsuccessfully with over 21 different variations of wheat. All efforts had been abandoned in pursuing matters further. Hazu lacked the support and finances the government projects may have had. For the Jamaat to be successful, it required a miracle to succeed where others had failed. We're on our way to see the very house Hazur relocated to in Tamale, and to show us around, we are going to meet the parents of our very own Abdul Hay, who were Hazur's neighbors during his stay in Tamale. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum How are you doing? So, this is where Hazur used to live. Looking at the building itself, it's pretty much humble. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was his reaction? What was his reaction like when you told him this is the house you got for him? Did he like it? Oh, he was very happy. I could see that he was uh, very anxious to move into the house. He was also equally happy that at least he had got a place where he could be very comfortable. And I saw a sort of a very unassuming, gentle, and uh, humble human being. That was how I assessed him. Uh, very quiet, very unassuming, and very respectful. All right, so can you show us inside the house? Yeah. This is the living room. This used to be the living room. Yeah, it's now an yeah. office. Yeah. Where we had a dining table at the side. Anytime we came in, he would welcome us. Then, uh, of course, my wife would go inside and meet the wife and I'll be here with him. So, when you came in, where did mommy used to go? Mommy, as soon as she would just take through this door mm. and meet uh, Huzun's wife. And then right. go into the bedroom. All right, so I'll meet Mami uh, right there and then ask her what she used to do with Huzru's wife and what uh, some of the activities. Uh, they... Mami, Salaam Alaikum. <laughs> so when you came in with Daddy, what, what happened? Anytime I came with um, my husband, Huzru's um, wife would meet me and then send me into her the bedroom. Yeah, where, 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 no, used to be. There no. were two bedrooms, All but right. we used to be here. Uh, okay. where we used to be. This is, so what, what's, what's, what's this now? This one, this place is now the, the office for the um, regional manager of Ahmadiyya unit. Ahmadiyya but, Education? Ahmadiyya and Education Unit. Okay. But this used to be one of the living rooms where I used to sit with um, my friend. Was this wife? Yes, please. The children sometimes, um, you know, sometimes when we came, they would come with um, Jamila yeah. and um, Nuru Haq. Yes. You know, so sometimes they used to play around mm. outside. Mm. They said an, an out house there, mm. or they would used to be there. You know, yeah. sometimes they would be around with um, Muzuru himself or here. Mm. So when there was any communication, then they would run there too. So what were some of the things you used to talk about? Well, well we talked about a whole lot of things because at that time things were so difficult. Mm. Things were so difficult. Yeah, there wasn't water. Too, yeah. Sometimes it was difficult to come by food. You know, so sometimes we lament on some of um, those things. She would um, tell me some of the dishes that they, they liked, and then she would also ask me some of the dishes that, um, you know, we also prepare in. I remember you telling me one time that those times it was so difficult that it was hard to come by water. Yes. So the water you would use to cook, mm -hmm. you would use that same water to probably wash your place, yes. use the same water to do other things. Other things. So did you ever at any point in time hear him or his wife Complain or regret coming here? Never. They never, they complain? never, never complained. Anytime you did anything, what, what it was, it was it, I mean, they were, they were just so content. 
with the situation that they found themselves. Never complained? They never complained. Not even once? Not even once. Not and even you were once. really very close? Very, very close. Very close. Wow. Very close. And very so, close. Uh, can you tell me, Mommy, uh, what's your fondest memory of this room is? Because I, obviously you had a lot of interaction. In fact, not here, but in the kitchen. Oh, can we I'll take a talk to the kitchen then? Yes. My, my, my. Memory was in the in the kitchen. Mm. This to be a very small kitchen. Mm. This is where it used to be. Yes. Mm. You can imagine this is the sink. Mm. You know, and they had a small table here, yeah. a very small um, work table. And this is where we used to. Sometimes when I came in and we used to come here, where she used to, she taught me how to do chapati. Oh. She taught me how to prepare okro stew, mm. which we used to eat with. Chapati. Oh. You know, she, she taught me how to do it. So now that's the secret behind the, the taste of your chapati. All oh, right. <laughs> I now know the secret to my mom's yes. chapati. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so she taught you how to prepare chapati. Prepare. What did you prepare? Teach her, teach her how to? Jollof rice. Jollof yes. rice? Yes. I'm sure, I'm sure she will still remember your love rice. Uh, but she also used yeah. to, to cook um, rice, uh, this colored rice yeah. with, with sugar, yeah. uh -huh, which I never ate before. Mm -hmm. And then she will prepare her rice with, uh, what do you call it, pickles. Mm -hmm. She will prepare rice and put pickles, mm -hmm. which I never ate before. Mm -hmm. But it was so nice. I used to enjoy it. And since she went, I don't think I've eaten pickles again. Wow. I'd like to get some. <laughs> Alhaj Momin leads us to his own old house where he and Hazur would often sit under the trees and enjoy some tea and conversation. So this is your house? Yes, this is where I, I live. Mm. And I actually, well, in the evening, we used to come and sit down here. They say between the hours of four and six. So what we used to do here, occasionally too, we went inside, mm. depending on the weather conditions. So you used to sit under yes. this mango tree? Yes. Was it as big as this? No, it was oh, huge. It was much smaller than this. So can you tell us what sort of conversation did you used to have and uh, what did the sort of things you used to talk about tell you about the personality of this man? Mm, well, uh, we talked about so many things as I've said, in fact from Alpha to Omega. We talked about religion, of course uh, as Amadis. We talked even politics, mm. local politics and international politics. Mm. So, mm. so um, Having interrupted with him on several occasions, yes. what sort of impressions did he make on you? Frankly, as a very humble, honest, gentle, and God-fearing person. Mm. Yes. And then I remember there was a, an incident I wouldn't forget. In the month of Ramadan, it was during the drought. We had, in fact, food was very difficult to come by. On the last day of Ramadan, the moon appeared. But believe me, some people didn't know what food to cook the full day for to celebrate it. I was a bit better, but I wasn't okay. So we're still, I was we were contemplating what to do with the rest that we had because it wouldn't be sufficient. Then somebody came, I think that was his houseboy. I said, Oh, he said, Master, Master see me, I'll call you. But I apparently asked him that uh, he wanted to see me. So I walked across. And then gave him salam. Then he told him that, oh, fortunately he was able to mobilize some rice. And was sharing among me members of the Jamaat. Of course, at the cost. So he said, this is your share. That's the price. This one is for Mr. Umar, the one who is now uh, in one. This one is for Mr. Umar. I said, okay, I'll take this for him. And then there was another chap also called Isa. He was just saying, of course, he said, this one please for Isa. But Isa came for his, I didn't do it for him. So when I picked uh, Mr. Omar's, I brought him home. I said, Man, you can't tell me, Madia, look at what has happened. Uh, Mr. Masrur has brought us some rice. I mean, it is so wonderful. We're all excited about the rice. So I quickly myself sent Mr. Omar's own to him. I said, oh, uh, uncle, uh, Mr. Mumin brought some rice here that is Mr. Masrur who sent it. He said, what? Rice? You don't on mean the rice? 11th yes. hour? On the 11th, 11th hour. hour. <laughs> the man, when, wow. when he just went and looked at his dinner, he just walked straight to me. Mm. He said, Uncle, what's the matter? He said, ah. He said, my brother, I said, remember, the, I'm going to quit. I said, under his quit. Yeah, he said, they said, this is a practical manifestation of Allah by himself. So uh, uh, now he would go to the farm as well. Yeah, yes. How did he usually go to the farm? When he came at first, he didn't have a vehicle. But he managed to go sometimes on a tractor, mm. sometimes he used it, he said on a motorbike. 
but eventually uh, he had a fort to come, which he was using. Mm. Yeah, so he used to use that one. So he was that humble? Yes. He could ride on a the, tractor? The tractor, on the mudguard, yes. On the mudguard of a yeah. tractor? Yes. And he was humble enough to travel all the way to uh, yeah, the Italy, Italy, on, yes, a, yes. on a motorbike as about, well? About 35, 40 miles away from here. <laughs> was he riding himself or someone no, some, used somebody to? Used, to, used, to, used to pick him, mm. yes. The site for the agriculture project was 40 miles away at the village of Depale, where Hazur would travel to and more than often used to spend his nights at the village. I'm now on my way to Depale, that very famous village where Hazur first successfully implemented and cultivated wheat for the very first time in Ghana. And prior to this, other government officials and agencies had tried several times to cultivate wheat in Ghana and had in fact concluded that it was an impossibility trying to cultivate wheat in Ghana until Huzu proved all those critics wrong. And then this is the road where Huzu used to travel on. He used to travel on this very road on motorbikes and sometimes even on tractors until um, the, the Jamaat purchased for him a vehicle similar to the 4x4 I am using now. And trust me, even uh, riding in this uh, 4x4, you can see it's very shaky and bumpy. It's not comfortable at all. So one can imagine 30 years back, the kind of turmoil Huzu had to experience on his way to the farm at Dipali. 40 miles on a dusty, broken dirt road is no easy journey in any vehicle. But try imagine so in a tractor. Muhammad Bukhari, the project's tractor driver, is going to show us how it was done 30 years ago. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Can I come forward to the pala? Okay, okay, come. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. So how are you doing? I'm, how are you? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Uh, how all right, let's go. I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. fine. Your family? Yes, I'm fine. All right. Uh, Do you remember one Mr. Masroo Ahmed? Yes, yes. That's my best friend. Your best friend? Yes. Tell me about him. Hey, after, after uh, Mr. Masroo, yes. I work with him in the palace. Mm. We do irrigation, metal corn, cow corn, wheat. Hey, many things, many things. At where? The palace? The palace, the palace. Uh, uh, so you used to drive the tractor to Tractor? The yes. Hey. Uh, has he ever joined you on the tractor? Yes, yes. Uh, tell me, tell me about his journey with you on the tractor. Every day we are going 40 miles, in and out, 80 miles away. Every day. And where would he be sitting? We are sitting behind where we are sitting. Just here? Yes. I can imagine this. <laughs> this man used to sit here? Yes, yes. On the mad guard of the yes, tractor? Yes, yes, yes. The time we are start making fasting. See, we have been going. Even during Ramadan, when Ramadan. you are fasting? Yes. Yeah, you also going. go on the yeah. farm? Yes. And you will be, during Ramadan, yes. you also sit sitting, on this? Yes. In yes. the scorching sun? Yes. Good that man yeah. very, very fine, good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. Sometimes I will, I will speak my English. You say, your English is very, very poor. <laughs> <laughs> he was teaching you English. Yes. And he will tell you your English hey, is poor. He said, hey, I'm, I'm not, uh, your English is very, very poor. I'm sure today, if he hears you speaking English, he'll give you a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One day, I'm not going to go to the house. I'm not going to go to the house. I'm not going to go to Kamelenung, <laughs> Ghana. So, when you're in Ghana, once you have to call it, you can't call it the palace. 
to Agri Canada come now, but in Yale. Brajim now who took to one Ghana. The Satan that called a carpool no, or then I know to dry, soak ten Panama, I'm kind of the lane. And then don't put them yellow up to my one that Janet has sunk in a sunk in a poor old cooler, Mamblang a twin young Batunda. When uh, we were running a farm there, there were quite a number of days when I would travel on by tractor to the farm, which was almost 35 miles from my residence. Sometime I, I used to drive the tractor, and some days I would sit on the mud guard of the tractor. <laughs> So, by the time you would get to the place, hmm? yeah? you are so tired that <laughs> it is very much difficult to, for you to do some job. This is the village of Dipale, now a thriving community, but at the time of the project it was a tiny village with farmland close to the White Volta River. As is customary, permission is first sought from the village chief. Talking for us is Hazu's old companion in the project, Muhammad Abdullah, now chief of his tribe. The present Hazu mm. was the farm manager of Ahmadiyya Agri Project, Northern Region, Kamale. Mm. The farm was sited in the palace. And due to the inconvenience or the, the, the distance from the palace to Tabale, the agri project decided to build a farmhouse mm -hmm. but as of now we can only have a trace of it because since we left the, the project people has encroached on the on where they will build mm. uh, the farm the farmhouse yeah. so where was this house this? this this was where the house was we had mm. two bedrooms two rooms this particular spot this particular spot so uh, from here most mm. likely mm. from here mm. up to that place so as i'm standing here it's possible i could be standing in a spot in, in, of, in a in, spot in the room in a room in a spot where huzuru used to sleep, sleep. this yeah. wow there was a room here yes. uh, was it made of bricks was it similar to us here or is those... I thought this is even looking more nicer this is nicer it's was it similar nicer. to uh that's uh, that we've just built we mm. some switch to build it yes then there's some little uh um right byproduct of rice axe wow to plaster it wow and the, the floor was anything just to lay our heads wow and huzu was pre present today huzu mm -hmm. could lay his head with us oh you mean you were all sleeping in well, the same in room the same room you were his work you were working was, under I him i was working under him i but, was his assistant manager all right Oh, yeah. we, we had to cook our own. And do you know what was happening? Yeah. Huzu, if Huzu was to stay here for three, four days, mm. his wife who has to prepare chapati, mm. then some cakes mm. that will survive him for afternoon, evening, and uh, morning for three days. You see this? Yes. You see this room? Yes. This is a modern room. <laughs> you call it, this is a modern, modern room. room compared to what you <laughs> and uh, Huzu, Huzu were saying. Wow. This is a modern room. Uh. Mm. Very nice. Huzu, we couldn't make a room like this. Oh, uh, yes. And uh, you, you didn't tell me about the roof, you know? It this was roof with This is made, made of well, grass. Grass. This is mm. grass. Yes. You, yours too was made was of grass. grass. We, we wow. had to buy the grass from this ledge. Wow. Yes. And, uh, well, obviously this, this is, uh, is uh, cement. This is well polished. Uh, what, what? Yes, we, 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 we just used mud to, to ramp. Mm. We used sticks to ramp it mm. so that it could hold. Yeah, so uh, talk about ants, talk about other rodents. Oh, but that, well, for that, we asked, we didn't talk of them. There, was no, there were no ants in the room? Wow. We have to manage with them. You had to manage, so you were literally living in the same room with ants but, at what, the time? What we had to do? Wow. And uh, snakes, scorpions. Snakes, oh, this this was the only place that was within this side, the only house. So you could imagine the type of rep, uh, mm. reptiles and other things we're facing. I had a snake bite, uh, the, this thing, scorpion bite in this one of our rooms for mm. three days. A scorpion bite? Scorpion bite. I wow. had the pains for three good days. 
And uh, what kind of things were you sleeping on? I can see this, well, uh, this is a modern kind of mattress, isn't it? Yeah, see, he had yes. uh, this uh, yeah. student light mattress uh, yes. before. Uh -huh. and, uh, or at times he comes with a uh, bed sheet. So he, he used to come with something with like this? Bed or a bed, bed sheet that we just put on the floor uh, yes, and lie on. on, 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 lie on it. Well, well, I know this, this, is, this is more comfortable than what Kuzu no, used to lie on. on. The, those, uh, the, the project has no money mm. to buy all these luxurious things. Wow. But I'll just, I'll just, um, uh, right now, James, I'm just going to make an attempt to have a feel of what Huzu okay. might have felt at the time that he was here and he would sleep on something which was, uh, which, uh, what we see here was more comfortable than what he used to sleep on. I'll, I'll just uh, try and see if I, I can spend eight hours of the night on uh, <laughs> this uh, mattress. And yes. you used to have um, uh, mosquito nets, you said? Yes, you, you, we, we nailed the mosquito mm. nets in the square yeah. rectangular form mm. for him to, to avoid mosquitoes. Oh, this this is this is very much unlike my bed. I, whoo, just wondering if I can survive this for eight hours. You know, I, I, but also has to survive with no, it. It's just too hard for me now. I can't. <laughs> oh, must have been a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, of course. Mm. Mm. And uh, for all of you. Yeah. Wow, Chief Mohammed Abdullah. So uh, in those days, obviously you you just mentioned you used to bring uh, Huzu used to bring uh, items like chapati and all that. Yes. But if you wanted to take tea. Obviously, you would have to boil water. Mm. How do, how do this, you got no electricity, this, no kettle? This <laughs> makes me re remember one day he was mm. angry at the farm. Mm. Then uh, he asked me to boil tea for him. Mm. Eventually, we used the, uh, the bowl that we used to prepare our soup. Like this one there? Uh, yeah, yeah oh, like, like that black... black yeah. Yeah, okay. So, mm. after preparing... Was, uh, Abdallah, Abdallah, have you put pepper in the tea? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Because uh, it, it, it's, it's been used to... It we had, used it to uh, prepare cook. our soup. So there was chili, there was spice, everything in it. And you didn't wash it well? Yes. So you have to manage. <laughs> Let's have a look at the pots here. Uh, yes, oh, okay. So, so there's water. Um, um, I can clearly see that uh, there's water in there. So, uh, but then this same pot... Uh, is used for soup, soup and is used other for things. stew, is hey, used yeah. for other so, things. Hey. And at the same time, you would use it to boil water. Bo Whoa. Boil tea. Bo <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that is it. Wow. So you, you could imagine the, the stress, the uncomfortability, the hardships, the sacrifice, the present who made the towards the, the, the Ahmadi Agri project. This was a co-worker, oh. so, uh, do I say, a companion in this village mm -hmm. who at times helps in the farm. Wow, wow, wow. This was our best friend. Mm -hmm. When we needed fish, <laughs> 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 he could give me a fish. <laughs> but that, uh, this guy was a small boy, <laughs> and we used to send them. Uh, so you see? Yeah. And they all knew Huzu. They all knew him. You all remember him? Is Amio? Is Amio? Kabuno, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. All right, that so is his well, name. All you are telling me here is that look, when Huzu worked here, he lived with them. He worked with them, and they all know him. They still do remember him, and they remember him by the name Assalamu alaikum, alaikum because they think that he was a man of peace, and indeed Huzu <laughs> is a man of peace. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So, Chief, can you tell us, um, first of all, uh, how, how did the whole project start? Uh, the whole project started by uh, instructions from Huzu, the former Huzu, that Ahmadiyya needed a project, a Greek project. So, Amir had to send some delegation then to Tamale, then they also came down here to meet the people of the village and to put them, uh, the farm proposals to them and a land of 1,000 acres was acquired. We didn't pay for it, it was not cashed, and yeah. uh, we started the project. Chief, can you take me on a trip to the, the, the farm? For sure. I would like to see oh, for the sure. farm for, for sure. myself. For sure. It's a lama sona, nyami no zamba, adasamba, mumma Then I would spend some night there, and there was no proper house, even though house, it was a small village. So we used to spend our nights with those local people. So they attached houses eh? and uh, they spread mat on the floor and there you sleep. So I slept some many nights in, in, the, in the bush and uh, whenever I would wake up in the night I would see around and see if there is any scorpion or something because there were so many scorpions there.
snakes or scorpion around you or not hmm? <laughs> evening approaches as our journey nears its end so chief how far is the farm from uh, this village it is deep early, but the farm is uh, still ahead you said yes um from the pallet to the farm, it's about three, between three and four kilometers. The nature of this road now, this is the 21st century, is still so bad. I can imagine 30 years back when you used to ply this road all the time, how was it? There was no road. There was no road. We had to use our tractor mm. because it's a bush yeah. machine mm. that paved the way for Huzuz at times pick up to follow. And I've just been thinking to myself, if it is this difficult now in the 21st century, I'm just wondering how it would have been uh, 30 years or so ago when Huzu worked on these parts of uh, the northern region. Even with the dirt roads, it would have been impossible to make our way without the village guides. Just imagine how tough it would have been 30 years ago. So when you saw him for the very first time in your life, what sort of impression did he make on you? Yeah, I was... Uh... I was not too sure whether he could do farming. Why? <laughs> yes. <laughs> why, why, why? I was not too sure mm. whether he could do farming. Because looking at how he was dressed, and I was, I knew him to be uh, the headmaster of Salga at mm -hmm. So I was a teacher, at a, a secondary school head teacher coming to be a farmer. So you doubted his ability, I doubted of, his ability of being a farmer. But you still went ahead to propose yes, to course. work with yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. There, there's something that might have uh, gingered you to uh, Yeah, you see, because they said uh, um, Amadea Agri Projects was going to be, uh, it was a humanitarian you know, project. Mm. It was not a profit making their destiny. Mm. And, and as an Amadi, it's a common pledge that we are all the time ready to serve yeah. the mission. Mm. So that also uh, you know, geared me to, okay. to come into the project. With the help from the locals, we have finally made it to the farm. All this land that you see was under Amade Agri Project. Mm. Oh. This was acquired by Amade Agri Project. How many acres is that? Well, we acquired 1,000 acres. Oh. Both for cultivation of rice, ginger, experiment of wheat growing, mm. vegetables like okra, carrot, a cassia or something like that, and um, so many other granites, mm. we even the granites and the upper land. So, so can, can you tell us, uh, before uh, this experimentation on wheat, mm -hmm. had you ever seen wheat with your naked eyes, with your own eyes? No, no, mm. it was on records that Ghana, no wheat can be grown in Ghana. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was on records yes. in Ghana history yes. that wheat cannot be grown in Ghana. But we experimented it on this land. And it was? It was very useful. Very, very successful. Successful. Wow. 100% successful. Wow. So that. Uh, so, um, so this is where you used to work? Yes, we used to work. You see, yeah. this was a pavement for the irrigation. Mm. This was where we could slope our machines down. Right there? Yes. Can we have a look? Wow. Yeah. It's, still, it's, still, it's still there. It's still, yeah. Wow. So, so what used to happen here? Um, uh, you we, have water? We, there's, that is a, a river. There's a river there? That's a river. Oh. So our machines were down there. Mm. Down in, is the river still alive? Yes, yeah, let's, let's, let's go, let's go. Um, and you were not scared of snakes or anything when you were working here? Because what do you have to do? <laughs> frankly speaking, I am scared of snakes. Okay, let me <laughs> take the leap. This is the white water, I believe. Yes, uh, I believe. Yes, um, so, yeah. So what happened from here? So, Chief so, is okay. I, no, <laughs> I want to show you something. Uh, you want me to so come down? Yes, there? come down. Uh, is it safe? It's safe. There's okay. nothing. You see, mm. we 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 cleared the the, the land here. Yes. Cleared the, the whole land there. Then our machines were there. Mm. Then we would lay pipes yes. up. Right. Mm. All this was cleared. We yes. lay. Uh, Put the pump machine there mm. to draw water from here mm. onto the land. Wow. Well, wow. we had three three machines mm -hmm. working at all the time. Mm. So you three were you, you had constant water, water supply, supply for the wheat project. Wheat, wheat, wheat project. And uh, which uh, so uh, how many, then, how many uh, months or years did it take for the project to mature? 
it's a, then you could say now it's been successful. Yes, uh, the wheat uh, cultivation was done only at one season. Yeah. We did it once. Yes. And it was successful. successful. Then um, we did rice irrigation. Mm. We did irrigation on rice. Okay. It was also successful. Wow. Then we did vegetables, okra, onion, mm. um, uh, carrots. Was Huzu actively participating that in was say, why at the times, That was why yes. at times he has to stay. Especially the wheat cultivation was very new. Yeah. I never knew agriculture. He yeah. was training me. Yeah. I was not an agri agriculturalist. Yeah. But oh. it was through, through, through him that I decided developing interest in agriculture. Wow. So wheat was the first experiment in Ghana. So Huzu paid more attention to it because when he wanted to do that, he was told he would not be successful yeah. because wheat cannot be grown in, in Ghana. Ghana. And he proved the and he proved wrong. the skeptics, uh, skeptics wrong yes. because those were all grown. Agricultural directors of agricultural uh, institutions came and visited the farm wow. and they were to impressed? sustain to sustain, uh, sustain the truth of it. Do you remember any scene, for instance, here, where Huzu did something here? Did he ever do something here? What, I mean, what I'm saying is that he was in uh, response. He had to teach us how to operate the machines. Yeah, so what did so he, he do? He, he goes, we go in down there with down him. Down there? Oh. Down there with him to prime the machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He would teach us how to prime the machines. Yeah. Because we don't, if you don't prime the machine, it will not put in mm. water. Mm. So he would go in, teach us how to prime the machines, teach us how to... Uh, to, 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 to to, to, to lay the pipes up mm. there, mm. he was totally involved. Tell me, tell me about your uh, mode of dressing. Eh? How, yeah, we, we, how, we, we, how we was he dressed? Farmers. He was a farmer. He was <laughs> dressed like a farmer. From the very few people working for the project, Muhammad Baku also had the privilege of working closely with Hazur. There at the farm, you never, you will never see him sitting. Always working here and there, uh -huh, turning the, the pipes of the, this uh, machine. These form from machines, put it into the water, dipping into the water. You will tell us, oh, let us go to the riverside. Then we'll go, you he himself will dip in the, the, the pipe into the water. I want the pipe to go inside the water. So we'll pull it and he himself will put it into the water. Then we'll go back and lay the pipes very well. Then we'll spark the machine. Then the, the thing will work. And you will never see him at one place, moving here and there. So how long did it take you to establish all this, you know, establish the, the pumping machines, clear the weeds, and before you started work? How long did it take the preparatory stages? Uh, well, the preparatory stages did not take as long time because we were all, hands were all on deck. Mm. Nobody was sitting idle. Yes. And there was no rest for anybody mm. until the machines were laid up. Ozo was a very sociable person. Mm. And he could say sorry. Yeah. The word sorry from him, from his mouth was not anything a big deal. And uh, he could, he was a problem solver. You see, mm -hmm. he could, um, should there be any problem, he quickly comes in to solve. Do you remember any he, such problems? You know, uh, with this type of nature of work, mm -hmm. where all of us were new, Mm. Right? Yeah. We becomes at times we, we, we at times we can't say bored up with the work. Mm. Then he will sit us down. Mm -hmm. Tell us the importance of it. Then we cope up again. Then to give you to re energize yeah, you to start yes. working. Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. And so um And at any time you went wrong, mm. he sits you down and advise you. Or oh, this is the way you ought to have done this, that and that. Mm, he was not harsh. Words. What kind of leader at the time? He was your leader on the farm. Uh, yes. So what kind of leader would you describe him? Would you say he was the kind of leader who would sit back and instruct you? Will you do that? You do he that? He was very active, involved. He was so involved. Mm. He, he was not a person who sits back and tells you do this and you know. Mm. He, does, he does it for you to see. Mm. So when you are, he's not there, you could do it. What's your most, um, the, the most memorable thing? that ever happened on this farm between you and Huzuru that you'd like to share with us? You see, what, what, what happens was that yes. Huzu was a person, not that because he's uh, Halifa now, mm. 
And uh, sometimes I used to ask myself what type of person he was. Yes. You see, he used to, at any time there was a problem, mm. or where the, we the workers were faced with problem with regard to work, mm. he draws it near God. Wow. Yes. How did he do that? Yes, he will tell you that, oh no, they show him the water. This is part of God's signs that he exists. You oh. must face this type of problems to show that God exists. And um, you used to say prayers remember, here? Uh, yes, we used to say prayers here, but the spot where we used to say Juma prayers, we can't get there because of water lock. Mm. Other oh, than that, we used to say Juma here? Juma. At any time, there was, <laughs> we, we, we were prompted Juma here, mm. who will make somebody call Azan. How many of you? If, if you we are three, four. Even if you were three? What? I remember we were two Juma. people behind, uh, standing behind Huzu. Uh -huh. And there would place. be a sermon? He would deliver a sermon and uh, would uh, lead us in prayer. Alhamdulillah. Yes. And I could remember one Friday, uh, the missionary and myself, plus Hosea himself, he, the three of us went to the palace. And when it was even time for Juma prayers, he said, Bako, you will call Azan. So I called Azan, Movi Kamara stood before us and gave some small sermon. And then Asu Sula, to show that with Husul and three of us we prayed. And the whole village they came and surrounded us. Well, they were surprised to see a black man in the midst of white men praying. Apart from Juma and um, advising you, what his lifestyle itself, what he was a very simple lifestyle man. Mm. He never wore expensive dresses. <laughs> and he didn't like expensive food. Mm. <laughs> What was ever was available. That was that why he used to ride the tractor. Because at any time he felt that um, consumption, you know, we had a Ford pickup, yeah. which consumed more petrol. Mm -hmm. So in order to safeguard missions money or the project's money, mm -hmm. at times we come with a tractor. And I just saw the struggle we had to go through to be here. So around that I time, tell you that this one was a, is this a better road. It was our tractor that we used to pave road. So you can imagine, like here, a wheel here, a wheel here, that's all. You move. Until recently, I, I never knew that he had devoted his whole life to Ahmadiyat. Mm. Until to, quite recently. But it makes me to reflect and to now reason why he was so committed to work. Mm. He was not lazy. He was not selfish. He was ready to share ideas with you mm. whenever you were wrong. And he was ready to listen to your advice. It's a lama suna, yami no zamba, ada samba, muma yenye, on any. It was a concept among those uh, agricultural experts that wheat cannot be grown here. But you know, there's a Mahamatan season. So I felt that during Hamatan, uh, where the, the temperature goes down, we can grow wheat. But how? There's no water. I said that uh, I was of the view that if we get water or irrigation facility, then we can grow wheat easily. I asked one of my friends in Nigeria to send me some wheat seed. And uh, that I experimented there. It grew very well. We irrigated them with uh, some, uh, um, sprinklers. Hmm? We lift the water from uh, water from uh, Volta River, huh? and it was quite successful. And uh, even up to now, Amir Sahib, Ghana, Wahab Sahib has kept that quantity of the wheat into a jar, and he has kept that jar into the in the exhibition hall of Ghana Jamaat. Huh? Up to now, they are very well preserved. Of this world, Islam has been brought by Allah. Let them merge it. It is the way to Allah. You have been witness to an incredible journey. To be devoted in the service of God is to sacrifice your life, honor, and wealth. It is to exercise the highest level of obedience and humility. It is to treat your fellow man with kindness and kinship. It was these qualities and the prayers of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih 
that enabled Hazur to succeed where everyone else had failed. A living example for all of us to follow. Hazur spent a total of eight years of service in Ghana. It's an example of uh, humility, it's an example of obedience, it's an example of commitment, it's an example of recognizing a human being for his work, what he is. God had a mission for him, so he made sure he protected him, he made sure he groomed him, he made sure he protected him in such a way that nobody in future will have any cause for pointing a nursery finger at him. He remained humble throughout, he remained dedicated throughout, he you know, went through all possible hardships that anybody can go through without any complaint. And uh, that is a mark of a real devotee, somebody who is dedicated to the cause. The Ahmadiyya Agriculture Project was an incredible success. But the village of Dipale is not forgotten. The village that welcomed the Jamaat is now itself a proud owner of a school. A farm that will forever bring a better harvest for all the futures to come.